Taurus is a feminine sign? Absolutely, because it's why? Because it's ruled by Venus. So Venus is the most comfortable in Taurus. So, uh, so it's ideally, not a confusing one wow. when it's the bull, which is I male, confuse but, uh, Taurus and Aries. Is what I well, you know, the Aries is the next bowl? door to Taurus. Oh. <laughs> no, here they are. Here's Taurus, Aries Taurus and here's Taurus. Bull, but it's Pisces, female. Aries, Taurus, Gemini. See, they're all I never knew that. They all follow each other. This, this never varies. In other words, Capricorn always follows Sagittarius, Sagittarius always follows Scorpio. So that, you know, is, is un, unvariable. Um, here's something that, um, that a lot of people uh, don't know, is that there are two asteroids out there, or planetoids, some people call them, and they're big enough that, that astrologers are now starting to use them in their work. And there are Ceres and Juno. There are others. There's also Pallas also known as Pallas Athena, and you know, a number of others. I think Ceres is actually bigger than Pluto. Ceres may very well be bigger than Pluto. Well, is, is Pluto about 1,000 miles wide? No. I, I don't know. This well, is about, Pluto it's about 800, 900 miles wide. Demoted, supposedly. It didn't and change its mass. Off, too. Yeah. Pardon the expression. Pluto was very annoyed that they demoted but it. I was and after too. that, Pluto is the, what, remember I said it's the planet of big money? The stock market, the uh, <laughs> the uh, housing market, everything just about collapsed at the same time as those silly astro uh, astronomers yeah. demoted. So-called astronomers. So-called astronomers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What kind? Well, of did you know that three states have reinstated it? No, I didn't know that. Yes, That's I think good. you'll what? Uh, yeah, I think Illinois is one, and there are two wow. others. So if you cross the border into Illinois, yeah. it, it is a, it is a planet. Wow, that's, Only on that's Earth. Yeah, so I, well, it would be interesting to see if those states, those states that reinstate Pluto, yes. uh, do better monetarily. Ah, we're gonna have to follow that along. Yeah. And one of them was which one did you say? Uh, Illinois is the only one I remember because I okay. lived there. Okay. We'll have to see what the unemployment rate is in Illinois then, because at least they reinstated Pluto. But uh, more and more, you'll see these popping up on charts now, Ceres and Juno, and actually. These two uh, asteroids add a wonderful touch to the astrology of the 21st century, and that is that they're healing plants and helping plants. What is Ceres about? She was the goddess of rain, wasn't she? I think another phase, well, another uh, incarnation with Demeter, you know, uh, and, and, and Durga in India, you know, but the goddesses of rain, a goddess of, of, of that kind of, well, from the earth. Oh, you know. cereal. Cereal. Green, not rain. Cereal <laughs> from Ceres, absolutely. And Juno has Maybe a kind of similar energy. I'm not uh, Juno's more, I think, at a more mental level, but this is a very healing energy. There's another asteroid that has, uh, that it's not actually an asteroid, I think they, there's another name for it, and that is Chiron. And Chiron even shows up in the ephemeris now. Its, it's orbit is between Saturn and Uranus. And the symbol for it is something like this. It looks like a, it looks like a key, is what it looks like. Chiron is a very healing planet. Chiron is a plant, a planetoid, I call it a planet, planetoid that has much to do with uh, overcoming adversity in people's lives and being, and, and say, let's say if a person was born with the sun in a conjunction with Chiron, they might end up being a doctor. Well, how I mean, you fast know, moving is it? Well, it's, a sp it's, it's about half as fast moving as, uh, I mean, it's as fast moving as the difference between uh, the orbit of Uranus and the orbit of Saturn. So if Saturn takes... So it's easy uh, to look up then. Yes, if Uranus takes 84 years to go around the sun or something of our years, and Saturn takes, let's say, 40 or something like that, then it would probably be 60-year orbit or something like that. So in a lifetime, it would just go through maybe two signs of a person's chart. Oh, good. Yeah, but these are the um, three factors that I'm certainly working, working with when I do charts because it just, uh, there's, there, the, these last few planets that we discovered, Pluto in 1930, Neptune around 1840, and Uranus around 1770 or so, they coincided with things like the French and the American Revolution, and, uh, and the Romantic Movement, and uh, the Civil War, and, and then of course, this one in 1930, that coincided with the Great Depression, and then World War II. So, these three have been kind of pushing us downhill a little bit. So it's, I'm glad that now we're using the asteroids, the planetoids, you know, because they have a they have an energy which will which will make a life, I think, a little better. And there. Are
they're out there, and they do seem to have a real impact. I was born with Ceres rising uh, right next to the sun in my chart, and I didn't even know that. And I was thinking, all my life I've had something to do with as a child. I grew up in an orchard, and I was always having to do, my life had to do with the crops and the, the fields and stuff like that, you know? And then later on I became sort of a little bit of a healer as I was helping my family with their illnesses and stuff. And that's because of Ser that's because of Ceres rising. 20, 30 years ago, people didn't think in those kind of terms. So next slide, please.